I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So I've been playing Phasmophobia, which uh, one of our listeners will be very aware of. Is it good? Clay. Um, yeah, it's really fun. I've been playing with one of our... <laughs> I've been playing with Clay. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> How's yeah. that going? Is that a, is that a still in the the old uh, that the the old Twitch there? Yeah, it's still there. Um, it's real fun. I die the most out of anyone for whatever reason. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's super fun. Uh, I definitely recommend it. It's kind of like it's kind of like Guess Who, if that makes sense. Okay. In 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 what way is it like Guess Who the spooky is? Wait. So what is that game? Phasmophobia is I know like, it's a spooky. So it's a spooky um in which you're playing a professional ghost hunter. Oh, I that, I I like that already. Um and what happens is you go to various jobs and you buy a bunch of utilities and tools and stuff like that. Um Am I to presume that in this universe uh, spookies are real? Yes, they are absolutely okay. real. So um you go to a house you find where the ghost is, and then you do a bunch of, like, like tasks to figure out what kind of ghost it is. Because you're, like, trying to determine if it's, like, a spirit, a wraith, a banshee, a yure, okay. all these things. Um, and then you do tasks in addition to that. But you have to thread the needle and not lose too much sanity. Because if you lose sanity, the ghost hunts you. Oh, so this has a mechanic sort of... Um... Uh, that game that we played a bunch of, and it's a board game. And why am I drawing a brain fart? Because it's a game. It's in my at, not my attic, my upstairs, where you're like betrayal. Yes, it's a little like but it's it's not quite. So I think there's like similarities, but it's it's not it's not a hundred percent. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I mean actually, yeah, it's it's so in betrayal, basically you find omens until you find. Until you fail to roll successfully roll, right? Okay. So in this case, you're finding importance until you successful you fail to successfully maintain your sanity. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's been pretty it's pretty fun, and I enjoy it pretty thoroughly personally. I haven't played in the past two nights, but that's a whole other reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. And at the very least, it's not suffering from massive lag spikes like Warzone is right now. Oh, jeez. I'm so upset. I think I think they were, well, because this is going to date this episode. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War came out. Oh, that's and I why. Think what they, I think what they did was they. They diverted some of the servers over to that to handle the load. I think they, depri- I think they deprioritized resources yeah, from Warzone that makes sense. to that, um, um. which is unfortunate because, like, I have no interest in buying a Call of Duty game ever, even though I play a Call of Duty game. Yeah, no, same, same, same. Um, on on the the you brought up sanity. Um, yeah. So I've had been having some weird dreams, specifically dreams where in the dream I wake up from being asleep in the location where I fell asleep, and it's mm-hmm. not third person; it's first person. So in the dream, I'm not aware that I'm still dreaming, and oh, then no. and then like. Just weird things happen, and then I wake up from that for real, and I'm like, "Oh, that uh, like I that's the worst when in a dream you you wake up from sleeping in the spot where you went to bed." So I had one where like I was just hallucinating, and I didn't understand why, but then I woke up. And I was like, "Well, th- well, the good news is I'm not actually hallucinating." Yeah. Um, oh man, those are the worst. They're, they're weird, and I had a dream a couple, I almost said days, nights ago, I suppose, and you made an appearance. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. So, so in between these weird dreams where I wake up, but I'm still in the dream. This one wasn't real, and I knew that because one, I was outdoors. I was on top okay, of a yeah, mountain. That's the that's the first. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's that's super unlikely. Yeah, so I'm out of doors and on top of a mountain, um, sparsely wooded, and uh, just hanging mm-hmm. out, minding my own business, 
and um, through the trees, you come walking. You're like, hey, Brandon. And I'm like, oh, what's up? I was like, I thought I was just out here hanging out on my own, but I mean, cool, you're here. And you go, um, I got a school bus. You want to ride it? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yes, I do. So then we go to your school bus that's on top of a wooded mountain. And you start going fly, like 50 miles an hour, which uh, on a road is pretty reasonable. But downhill on the wooded mountain it was pretty sketchy. You pulled out some pretty sick maneuvers, but then there was like uh, that, like the tree density became greater. So then we had to get out and we're like, how are we going to, I guess we just have to walk this down to the bottom of the mountain before we can pick up our red school bus ride. So you pull a guitar <laughs> case and the school bus. And, okay. And, and here's how it works. Because you know how like if I hold up one of my guitar cases in front of my eyes, I can cover my car with it. So by like by that logic of perspective, you set guitar case on the ground and put said school bus into guitar carrying case. So then we can just walk it down the rest of the mountain. Then we get to the road. Boom, boom. Open guitar case. Pull the bus out. Get back inside of the now regular size bus because we walked to a point where to our perspective, it was full bus size. Start ripping it down the street. It was pretty great. You all right there? Yeah. <laughs> There was one dream where I woke up and I was like, I need to commit myself to remembering this. That is a wild dream. Yeah. Most of my dreams are like nightmares in which I think I've done something. And then when I wake up, I'm like, oh, I did that thing. Wait, did I? Or wait, why did I do that? Oh, my God. What have I done? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Uh, that's that's. That's a delightful dream, though. Yeah, it was pretty great. It was fun that the whole deli- time. That is a delightful dream. Yeah. The, um... Oh, jeez. I wish my dreams were that delightful. Because <laughs> they either don't exist, or it's whatever... It's a it's a representation of whatever trauma I'm working through that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Of course, now... I think we went – so what it's reminding me of is the time that we went to um, the, like, the fire tower in Woodstock, like, years and years ago. I forget who we went oh, with. Oh, yeah. It was you, me, uh, I believe Falco, and – There was one other person, and I don't yeah. know who it was. They, they were there, but I remember yeah. going there, and I don't even remember why we went there. Uh, the I think. Place. Oh, no. was it for geocaching? It might have been. It might have been. But it no, it wasn't for geocaching. It wasn't that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like weird. Cause like that was a group of people who don't hike. No. No. I remember we people smoking like, smoking cigarettes while hiking up a mountain and thinking, yeah. this seems counterintuitive." Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, because I also remember you talking about like how they would take you on that mountain in driver's ed to practice like oh driving yeah down yeah a yeah that yeah they did that's driver's ed I remember that they they we drove we took turns driving up and down a mountain to get used to driving up and down a mountain and then they also scheduled um, extra lessons on days when they knew the the roads were going to be bad in the winter so that we could yeah. practice. Um, like actually, they had us practice pulling off of the road into um, into snow, because they said oh, like yeah. your car's gonna act different. Like if you get a flat and you need to pull over, you have to know how the car's gonna act when you start to go into snow. So like we like drove intentionally from a road into snow. Oh wow! So they, they were actually good lessons outside of the uh, ones where you have a notepad and watch a video but that just says don't drive bad because crash. I got pulled over, by the way. Recently? On Friday night. Yeah. Not Friday night. Uh, Wednesday night, I got pulled yeah. over. Um, what for? So I was driving back. So here's the thing. I'm going to implicate myself. I was speeding. Yeah, 9W. I was going yeah. 60. Were you listening cause... to a good song, though? Because I noticed that when I hear a song that's good, for some reason, I go way faster than I usually I was do. Listening, I was listening to the, the kooky, spooky Aquabats 
<laughs> of uh, course you were. Album because it was real good. Um, <laughs> I think it might have been Dangerous Leon. Was that was the song I'm listening to? Which okay, is, which oh. is my jam. That's a jam right there. Um, and so I'm, I I'm like, I look down at my 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 speedometer while I'm driving. I'm like, oh fuck, I'm going a little too fast. Lights flash on behind me. And oh, like, like as soon as you notice. Yeah, and I'm like, that sucks. Okay, so I pull over. I'm panicking because I don't know where my life. I don't know where my registration is because my, de- my, my glove box is a total mess. Mine's right? on my coffee table. Yeah, that's not great. You should probably put that in your, in your, uh, in your glove box. That you know, I've never. Idea. I mean, I'm I'm a little disappointed because I do stay on it. Like I keep every time I get a new one, I keep keep on top of it, um, putting it in the glove box, and no one's ever asked me for it ever any of the times i've been pulled over well you can also you can also do a look up for the for the license plate the, the registration i, I imagine that's what they easier. do because i'll get so. pulled over and then they'll just sit in the car for a while and i imagine what what they're doing is checking my plate first yeah usually and then they run your license and all that stuff so anywho the reason he pulled me over fucking tag light was out ah and i'm just like do you even need uh, to have a uh, a license a license plate light on your car he said that i could have gotten a ticket but that's what cops will do i've been inside of cars that have been pulled over for the same reason and every time that happens in my own head it's like, like pickup trucks don't have lights at least the one my parents have doesn't have a, a light on the back license plate it's just like on the bumper apparently is it one of those things where, like, if you have them, they must be on or some um, weird thing? They are, in fact, necessary in New York State. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I guess I learned something. Yeah. yeah. So you do need tag lights, yeah. apparently. Yeah. I get um, pulled over the most for headlights being, like, having a headlight off or a brake light out. Yeah, well, remember, never. I'll never forget the moment that we got pulled over in fucking Catskill. Oh, yes. I, I gotta say, I have definitely benefited from white privilege all the times I've been pulled over. Because Oh, yeah. Um, I, I still will never forget the fact that the only person who got intensely questioned was the only black man in the car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still remember and him. And who, by like, the only person who, like, they asked to see inside of his bags and was asked what he had in his hands, to which he had the best response. Yes. <laughs> Cause he My was, dick. He was holding his dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember when he said that, and I'm just like, oh, dude, I love you, but, like, could you not piss yeah. the cops off? Yeah. That car also had, like, five people in it, too. It was you, him, maybe Nick, and I think one other person. Yeah. No, it was probably four, because... But it... Still, I was just like, oh, I'm gonna get... Like, they're gonna get me like on that... some stupid fucking thing. I love that and response. They'll... And by that point in time, by the way, I believe, like, we've, we're have we used to um, people asking to look in our bags because we would play tr- collectible card games late at night. So yeah. wouldn't be weird to like, at like midnight, be on a street corner with backpacks trading cards, which to a cop looks a lot like a group of kids standing on a corner making hand to hand transactions. So they're gonna be like, let's take a look. I mean, honestly, um, they were kind of drug deals, in a sort of way. In a sort of way, yes. <laughs> in a sort of way, it was a drug deal. Um, so you know. Yeah. But the, uh, yeah. And on the, the subject uh, D, of magic. D, D. Yes. Oh my god, super troopers. Yeah. Yeah, they super trooped us. Yeah, they they like yelled for you to put your car in drive three times before speeding off. And like spinning around. I'm just like, are we gonna get pulled over again? Because like <laughs> where they just keep saying meow. Because <laughs> it wouldn't it would have been less surprising 
if they had actually looped back around <laughs> and like well they they did loop back around well and then re pulled like, you over <laughs> yeah uh, I thought I like had not turned my sig- turn signal on or something like that because it was after we were doing a turn so I'm like what the fuck did I do wrong because like I was like I followed the rules of the road and then they were like really super critical of us and like why aren't you on the throughway? And it's like, well, this is the way that I know to go. And da 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 da. And it was just like, <sighs> this is super interesting talk about the it time is. I got pulled over. Can I just say that's not? I don't like that they do that because I get pulled over. Like, so where are you going? And I have my preferred roads to drive because I don't mm-hmm. like traffic or I'll limit the number of left-hand turns I have to make. So I've been pulled over multiple times. Yes. Where they're suspicious that I'm doing what I'm actually like trying to go where I'm actually trying to go because I'm not on the road they would have driven. What the what what what's up with that, doc, uh, uh, Officer OCD? Uh, well, it's it's because the war on drugs is a terribly, terribly, terribly racist institution and uh, really bad for the overall sanctity of human humanity. Well, yeah, but also don't add, mind your business where I'm going. Is it? Can but, you just tell if they say where you're coming from? Can you just say none of your business? If you say that, you can get arrested. Can you? Because it's not like I'm coming from work. Yeah, like but, it's four thirty. Where do you think? I, what, where do you think I'm coming from? Work. But like, like, I mean, for you and me, probably nothing bad would happen. Let's be real. Because no, you I and got I are pulled the over whitest once whites. on the way home because I didn't know um, that. Uh, here's going to be some very specific things, and we'll get to more relatable things. You know how yeah, 20, gotta... there's that big old divider in the middle of the road, so you can't – it's a divider? Yeah, yeah. There's a school bus stopped. I didn't know you had to stop for a school bus that had the stop sign out if it's on the other side of a divider. Yeah, you te- you technically do, even yeah. though it makes no fucking sense. Yeah. So and I was like, yeah, that's why I, I was like, yeah. He said, you see the bus? I said, yeah. He said, there's the divider. And he goes, yeah, you do. Uh, uh, scram. Get out of here, kid. I actually speed a lot on that road, too, and I got pulled over once, and they uh, asked me for my license, and then they said, I said, they said, where, where are you coming from? And I said, work, and they said, where do you work? And I said, where I worked, and then they just handed me back my license and left. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. I was like, that's kind of weird. That is kind of weird. Um, But with that, I think it's time to actually start the episode proper, because we're at 17 minutes. Oh, um, damn. Hey, and my neighbor's yeah. generator stopped right in time. Okay, cool. Awesome. I couldn't hear it, by the way, so It picks whatever. up a little bit in the episode, and when I can, I try to, like, cancel out that frequency for, like, a section. Uh, okay, okay. Um, So, welcome to Cryptopedia. Something, something, some copy I wrote yeah. two years ago. The monster show about regionally specific problems. Yeah, it's also going to be a regionally specific monster this time, too. So, cool. Okay. Um, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And this week's cryptid. Yes. And it is a cryptid. Was first recorded, according to lore, in 1600 AD. Okay, that answered one of my questions, which was in text or video. (laughs) Yes. Um, and it also takes place... In what I would, what many consider New England, but I would also consider New York because that's who I am. Because I'm a New Yorker. What do you think this is? A New York cryptid? Yeah, there's not many. Can is it land? Can I can I ask? Is it land, sea. water, or sea? Okay. Well, water, water, in water. General. Is it reasonably close? To you and I. Um, it's more than a two-hour drive away, but how far away is okay? So it's not not Poughkeepsie. It's not Poughkeepsie. Okay. It's not Poughkeepsie, and it's not the Hudson River. Okay. I surrender, but you know where I was going with Poughkeepsie, right? Because we've got that Poughkeepsie water guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a Hudson River monster, and I forget his name. But he has like literally two sightings ever. Daryl. <laughs> yeah, Daryl is, is is his is his uh, Christian name. Yeah. <laughs> um. So now, uh, this week we're going to be covering Champ, the Lake Champlain monster. 
Is Lake Champlain, does that touch New York? I know that's... Yes, it does. Like, near... Where is so, it? Oh, good, you have a map. Yeah, it's it's on the boundary line between New York and Vermont. Ah, uh, okay. I thought so, like, it was somewhere, but one of the ones between uh, ca- the Canada and the U.S. It's, there's Canada there, too. It's just in the corner. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Is Quebec so, really that close to Vermont? Yes, that's the province of Quebec. <laughs> I'm... Wow, I really yeah. should have paid more attention in in uh, I almost a geometry class. That'd be weird. I mean, you probably should have paid attention to geometry class as well. Yeah. But I don't know how much it would help you with geology and uh, <laughs> and maps. Geography is the word that I was looking for. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> cartography. Uh, cartography is separate. Cartography is the study of making maps. Geography is the study of the way that the world is laid out anywho so this week i'm going to bring us back to cryptopedia's roots enough of the ghosts and haunted roads for one week because we still got that we still got that good good black monk story bubbling what, uh, next episode there is going to be a lot of me complaining i am so over <laughs> this fucking black monk <laughs> i feel like i feel like you have a very unique outlook on that because so many people talk so long and care so much about that story like i think the astonishing legends series on the black monk of proctor fact is like three hour long episodes long and they're talking about the monk almost exclusively i i i also for the benefit of benefit of everyone i'm i'm starting to just cut out major portions of the book because they could be more or less copy and pasted from other parts of the book <laughs> The, it's just, uh, I'm just so over it because it's so repetitive. It's like the same well, thing happens just in a different room, and they write for about that for pages and pages. Well, it's proof because if you write about it, it's proof. You can't you can't lie about what you write about. The, uh... Um. So yeah, we're doing a bona fide monster this week in the form of New York's own water, one of New York's own water monsters, which they like to go by wet boys. Wet Boys, yes. One of New York's own Wet Boys, um, of which I think there's two Wet Boys. Um, although technically, technically, this is also considered Vermont, and a lot of people consider Vermont more, but I'm a New Yorker, so go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> that should be the actual state motto. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. I'm a New Yorker, go fuck yourself, yeah. is pretty much... You know, the way it works. Um, but anyways, for the rough outline this week, I'm using three sources. Uh, Curious Creatures of New England by Christopher Forrest, as well as two articles from the Chasing's Champ series on Skeptical Inquirer. Uh, Legend of the Lake Champlain Monster by Joe Nickell, And The Measure of a Monster by Benjamin Radford. So... <laughs> You might you might have a bit of an inkling as to what my opinion on this is, judging by the number of skeptical articles versus the yeah. non-skeptical article. The but, measure of but, a monster sounds like the perfect way to sell a tape measure specifically for penises. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a really bold... Uh, that's, that's a really competent human. Yeah. <laughs> so, I was talking to someone, and my new favorite turn of phrase is the competence of a mediocre white man (laughs) and i'm like man i wish i had the competence of a mediocre white man (laughs) uh so anyways lake champlain or and this is going to be rough for me so i i apologize pitawabagak in abenaki and (sighs) kaina Tara Kawa Ronte and Mohawk, which I think is right, but <laughs> you physically steeled yourself to try to pronounce that. I, I just, it's not that I don't want to try and pronounce it right. It's just I'm, I've got dumb tongue. Um, you don't is have located in dumb tongue because it that last one might as well be Welsh. I do have dumb tongue though. Like I can't I can't not say I don't I I can't say I don't have dumb tongue full stop. Yeah. Um but anyways, it's located in northwestern Vermont. 
and northeastern uh, New York, right? And southeastern Quebec. So it's, it's got the whole thing. Uh, the lake itself is massive. It has 514 square miles of surface, measuring at 107 miles at its longest point and 14 miles at its widest. So it's a real narrow boy. Yeah. Uh, although 14 miles is nothing to joke about because, like, at it, its longest, you could probably not s- necessarily see the other side for a guarantee on certain days. Yeah. So um, the lake itself is also fairly deep, reaching depths of up to 400 feet. Which, for those of you wondering, because I did the math, that's 13 atmospheres of pressure at the bottom of the lake. Oh, all right. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, The lake itself was likely first encountered by hunter-gatherer tribes about 11,000 years ago, when it was more sea than lake. Um, Basically, uh, it slowly receded, effectively. The water receded kind of in the way that glacial actions do stuff because i'm pretty sure it's a glacier carved lake for all intents and purposes <laughs> that reminded me and i'll try to stop interjecting so much i was in okay well let, let me high school a cl- uh, high school class high school okay. uh, i forget ex- exactly what grade but it was high school for sure and we had there that someone thought great glaciers were uh living creatures and it came out because they 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 ask very loudly like they're not animals and the and the teacher did handle it very well because they the they made the face of someone who just told them don't make a face like don't react um <laughs> and it was because this individual oh, um God. thought because I know glaciers are big and glaciers move because they move therefore they are animal I feel like I know who you're talking about but I don't know their name yeah. <laughs> uh, that's. I don't know if I spelled it right, but yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. I was right. Sure. Yep. Okay. Um. <sighs> okay. The region would maintain its indigenous names for the following 10,000 ish years until Samuel. 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 Samuel de Chaplin. Sa- yeah, Samuel Champlain. Samuel Champlain. Uh, Samuel de Champlain, in traditional explorer arrogance, happened upon the lake and renamed it for himself in 1600 AD. This is mine now. I- this is mine. That's how it works. I don't have a well, pool, but, there's but a my bunch neighbors of- do. Therefore, that's my pool. There's a bunch of Native Americans here, though. But I'm the first white guy here. Yeah. So, it's mine. They uh in 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 because Thanksgiving's coming up. There's an early I think it's in like the 30s. The a dollop about the first Thanksgiving, and it's just amazing. Oh my god, I gotta I gotta listen to it. The like, dollop. I got I got really upset listening to the dollop. Not because I was mad at uh the world. <laughs> not no, not because I was mad yeah. at their pre like present presentation, but it was the uh, Addy. Hawthorne oh, Hoffman Hoffman Addie yeah. Hoffman episodes and I got real mad <laughs> <laughs> there's th- this th- their Thanksgiving one's great because they go over like what really happened but also like the the people who they sold a bunch of Native uh, American well he calls them just Americans which is fine so they sell a bunch of Americans as slaves and come back and then land like they do a maps bed and are in just a spot and they're like starving. People are dying and then just uh, one of the same people that they just sold as a slave, like there's someone just comes walking out of the woods speaking English and just sees all of these starving, dying white people and goes, "Do you guys have any beer?" <laughs> <laughs> and it was. Oh, uh, just in my head, the, the way he describes the scene was amazing. Uh, I'm gonna have to listen to it after this. Um, so that being said, because I'm great at, tr- at transitions, uh, Samuel de Champlain's Explorer Journal has potentially the first reference to this week's monster. Oh, okay. Um, so the local Iroquois lore contained references to a giant horned sea monster who made its home in the lake. 
Other groups believe that a monster made at least one of the islands its home. Additionally, in this iteration, the, the creature was said to be truly massive, um, larger than even a ship. It was also capable of shape-shifting into a woman and would devour passerbys whole. Um, That's so... the part that they leave out in the newer like monster hunt episodes. Yeah. I, I'm imagining the the woman in the water from Courage the Cowardly Dog who's like jaw like unhinges and becomes gigantic. Oh. I was, the ones where uh, Um who who I was imagining the truck driver from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, Big Marge. Yeah, Large, large Marge. Marge. Large Marge. <laughs> Why was that so scary? Like That was really scary. Like, I think it's probably a lot of people's first experience with a jump scare, to be totally yeah. honest. Well, maybe not so much anymore, but our generation's first experience with a jump scare. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, this 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 creature was like a man-eater, for all intents and purposes. Um, Champlain's account contains a similar legend, and in this iteration, the creature was once again renowned for eating humans whole, and its prodigious size was such that the pouch on its stomach, which apparently it had, because I guess it was a marsupial... Uh, was capable of storing a whole ship. Didn't say how big the ship was, so I'm not sure if it was a canoe well, that's or... That's crazy. And did you just forget about seahorses? I did. I did just forget about seahorses. How dare you, sir? <sighs> the men get pregnant. The men get pregnant. That sounds like a weird fetish. It super is. <laughs> I I learned about some fetishes last night from looking at a sex museum online. You was this the one that was shared to the uh, Discord, the uh, the penis museum? Uh, no, this is a separate one. This is the New York the New York Museum of Sex. Um and blood play was on there. I'm aware of blood play. Uh the cannibalism like uh like faux cannibalism's a thing. Which um, which form? The, the the regular size one or the one where it's like um you're being consumed like, by a giant because they those well, are two very those are both there. There's oh. four and auto cannibalism. Um, oh, auto cannibalism, and a lot of blade play. Uh, New, anywho, what's it? The New York Museum of Sex. Um, so. They also, okay, okay. Do they do a virtual tour? I don't know if they do, uh, but, so there's a, so if you go to the Museum of Sex NYC. Yes. This is, this is like, limited to right now. There's something called Super Fun Land. What's that? I bet it's great. Open it up and hit play on the, the video. Wait, what? So, is that the website NewYorkNYC.com? Yeah. Wait, what? It's not Museum of Sex NYC? Here. Oh, Super this Fun Land. The... I see. Yeah. Get teased. Okay. Play 33 seconds. Uh, at 15 seconds, it gets real good. I like the... It's like some weird... Uh, it seems like a Rob Zombie music video almost. It kind of does. I mean, there's enough orgasms to make it sound like a Rob Zombie music video. Yeah. I like there's a mime in there. What's a mime? I guess people might like mimes. It's some sexy stuff. This but, is actually a, a journey to the erotic carnival. One, yeah. That looks so kind of cool. You, but also, did you see the wall of dildos? The wall of dildos that were getting hand jobs. Yes. Um, yes. I, I, can I just say that surprisingly very good website. And oh, video. no. Like, everything's super high quality. Well, because it's like, like a real fucking museum that tries to explore human sexuality and it's more or less a gallery than anything else because it's examinations of human sexuality because you can't it's like it's more or less you trying to they they do bachelorette parties by the way okay <laughs> nice. um so yeah found out about that and i don't know why i even brought that up Exhibition. seahorses seahorses got it there it is so uh I don't know how big the, the pouch was. Like, I don't know who was storing canoes or who was storing, like, clipper ships or rowboats or what. Uh, but still, regardless, that's fairly large. Uh, it is said that the creature would capture humans and store them in the pouch for later. 
this proto champ would also eat birds that landed on its head with a beak. What? So it was a thing. Now, there is some dispute over whether or not Champlain saw Champ himself, although Creatures of New England reports the following clarify following clarifier was specified by Champlain. What makes me believe what they say is, in fact, that all the natives in general feared it and told such strange things about it that if they were to record any, if I were to record all they say, Champ would be regarded as a myth. Now, Brandon. Yes. What sounds suspicious about that sentence I just told you? Um, <laughs> you're kind of pruning things to try to lay. Like, what's it's got like select like he's selectively choosing what to record to make it seem more viable. Well, um, so here's what I think. I try to cross-examine that quote and okay. look for it um, because it's it's from a book by – it's from a journal by Cham- Samuel de Champlain. It's probably, like, going to be indexed somewhere. Couldn't find that quote exactly anywhere. What? Um, yeah. So also the other thing, too, is Champlain calls the monster champ in that quote. And I don't know if that was coined by the 1600s. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of questioned this quote, quote, and it made me like a little bit questioning of all the testimony in my main source this week. So I switched at this point. I switched over to Joe Nickel's uh, article as with him. Yeah. Yeah. um, As my main source. So uh, I did come across a quote from Joe Nickel, as I said. Yes. Uh, which was pulled from Champlain's account, which is a bit more useful. And oh. actually, super useful to my whole hypothesis on yeah. this monster in general. Um, so this is a direct quote from his journal. Uh, I think it's his, his like, ninth journal or something. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, there is also a great abundance of many species of fish. Among these, there is one called by the natives, Sharosu, which Sha... Shao Saro, Shasaro, Shasaro, it seems about right, uh, which is of various lengths, but the largest of them, as these tribes have told me, are eight to ten feet long. I may have seen some five feet long, which were as big as my thigh and had a head as large as my two fists, with a snout two and a half feet long and a double row of very sharp, dangerous teeth. Its body had a good deal, has a good deal the shape of a pike, but is protected by scales of silvery gray color so strong that a dagger could not pierce them. So, um, if you're familiar with the fish of upstate New York and the Northeast, um, this is a gar, which is a yeah. type of, of like, like it's a nasty sturgeons boy. are a gar. Yeah. Um, and, uh, wow, that sentence is bad. <laughs> Very bad. Uh, so, but he's disguised. He's basically describing a sturgeon, which, if you've listened to any of our episodes about sea monsters, they tend to be the ones who get saddled with the "I'm a sea monster" story. They are kind of sea monsters, though. They are like, don't get me wrong, they're nightmare creatures. And if I got bumped up by a sturgeon, and I was underwater or in the Hudson, I'd be terrified. Oh yeah, they're not. They're not like they're not vicious animals, but they're scary because they're huge. <laughs> you would, you would both be terrified and be at a higher risk rate of cancer. Well, because I'm in the Hudson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have swum probably more than is healthy in the Hudson River. There, that means at all. Don't touch yeah. the water. Yeah, I well, when I was a kid, I would swim. My parents had a boat, so I would swim in the water. Oh, see, I don't like I don't like being in water that I can't touch the bottom in. See, I'm fine with that. Like, I like swimming in the ocean, although I don't like the the, the shells. I don't even like the concept of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> like that's way t- it's a really big. I don't like really big empty things dasselphobia or whatever yeah whatever that is yeah i don't like the ocean (laughs) ocean bad i like the ocean or even like the idea of like being in a a really wide empty field Uh, i don't like that either well that's how that's when the jeepers creeper gonna get you that's when the jeepers creeper gonna get you that that like monster's gonna get you there 
Yeah. Um, so you got to be careful there. Also, um, in slasher films, when you have nowhere to run, there's a problem. Um, if Also, if you have nowhere to run or hide, but if you had a ton of places to hide, they're both problems in slasher films. There are problems. I had a coworker, by the way, complain about slasher movies because he said that they're actually stabbing people wrong usually, and they then described the right way to stab somebody to try to kill them and not... I was less worried about – see, I could suspend my disbelief, right, because it's a zombie man with a mask trying to go do the stab stab. Now I'm more concerned that you're doing research on the right way to stab people. Yeah, that's that's the bigger concern yeah. because uh, here's the thing. Like, I'll fully believe that Michael Myers can stab somebody the wrong way because the dude is, like, unstoppable. Yeah, he's like a supernatural being in the movies. Yeah, so, and Jason Voorhees is literally a zombie. Yeah, like, like I'm not going to watch them attack someone and go, well, you know, you're, you're probably going to hit a rib. Like, that's yeah, not no. the thing I'm thinking about. No. I'm thinking about, oh, God, that's rough. That's brutal. Yeah. Because um, you don't watch those movies for any kind of, any sense of reality. I mean, no one watches a horror movie for the plot. I watched the horror movie. I watched The Evil Dead, the remake for the plot. I actually really like that story. Oh, the Evil yeah, that fine. Uh, I'll, the I'll Evil Dead that. remake was really good. I really love that I'll one. I'll concede that one. I I um I was super impressed by that film. To be totally honest, uh, the 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 way that they turned the original Evil Dead story on its head was phenomenal, in my opinion. Um. And they like made it a story of addiction and all sorts yeah. of stuff, and they they layered in a rebirth narrative, and oh, it's. <laughs> I wish they did more with that storyline, but they didn't. Um, but then we got Ash versus the Evil Dead, so I guess it all shakes out in the end. And it Zena, does. the Warrior like Princess, that. was there. I loved it. I didn't finish the last season, but I thought it was a really, really good. It was Bruce Campbell in like pure Bruce Campbell. Yeah. My name is Bruce, though I think is probably my favorite Bruce Campbell movie ever because of how meta it is. Yes, true. Like in the my, I love the the cowboy, the the cowboy um, Asian dude who sings Wandy is his name, <laughs> but like it's a it's like a cowboy thing because because yeah. like you know he's from a family that has grown up in that part of like like where cowboys be. So it doesn't matter what his nationality is. He's from the, he's a cowboy from that area. Yeah. <laughs> which is pretty great. Um, anywho, I'm, I'm just gushing over how much I love uh, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell, which I think is a fair thing. Mm -hmm. Bubba Hotep. Um, other things that he's done. Yeah. Bubba Hotep, by the way, because I'm assuming most people haven't watched it. Elderly Elvis Presley fights a mummy. There you go. Um, doesn't he? Isn't his best friend? Doesn't his best friend think he's JFK as well? If my memory is correct, one of the dead presidents. Uh, let me see. One second. I gotta look this or up. Roosevelt is. Was it maybe Roosevelt? Well, so it was a. Okay. Um. Ozzy Jack is the name. Uh. uh Ozzie Davis is the name of the actor. Elvis's only friend is a black man named Jack who insists he's pre John President John F. Kennedy claiming to have been dyed black after an assassination attempt and abandoned by <laughs> Lyndon Johnson in a nursing home. <laughs> yep. Watch it for the plot. Initially skeptical of Jack's story, Elvis does not does spot a mysterious scar on the back of Jack's head. It could be from the head wound seen in the Zap Bruder film, but then again, it might not. So, yeah. Bob Ivy was Bubba Hotep. <laughs> Television stunt masters. That was the last thing he performed in. What, before dying? Huh? No, he just quit. Wait. No, People... Bruce Campbell was in um the movie that No, no. I'm talking about the guy who played Bubba Hotep. Oh, gotcha. I was like, no, Bruce Campbell was in that the the Wizard of Oz remake. Oh, he was the wizard. Wait, he was uh, a soldier, I think, like at one of the gates. He was a winky guard. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, Sam. Ra- I forgot Sam Raimi made Oz the Great and the Powerful. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Sam Raimi loves Bruce Campbell. Yeah. A lot. That he does. But I love Bruce Campbell, too, so. Yeah, fair. He hosted Ripley's Believe It or Not last year. One, I didn't know that show was still going. He was Ronald Reagan on Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, okay, um, sorry. So, in 1819, the first account of a monster in the lake, in the lake, in a newspaper was recorded uh, in the Saturday, July 24th issue of the Plattsburgh Republican. The sighting was made by one Captain Crumb. Is that a real name? Uh, it's what they call him, who's, who saw the monster in Bulaga Bay. This monster was black in coloration, 187 feet long, with a flat head resembling a seahorse's. So see, I didn't forget about seahorses. Okay. I just forgot about their pouches. Um, and the head was a whopping 15 feet out of the water, about 200 yards away from the ship. Aw, kitty. Ow, kitty shark. Um, kitty is our shark. Kitty shark. Uh, <laughs> kitty. K- kitty sees wires. Kitty has opinions that Kitty wants to share on a podcast that yeah. we can't allow Kitty to share. There's a cat on my shoulder very close to the microphone. Who? Cat. Cat. Get, get, don't just she just doesn't want to get down no she wants to be a parrot apparently yeah it's a good thing this is a super comfortable position to be in it is it's super yeah. good especially considering that you're holding a cat up with your shoulder which is usually the lightest thing in the world because cats are really good at like distributing their weight properly and not putting it all on one paw yeah um <laughs> Where, why cat, cat falling sharp falls sharp, sharp, sharp fall falls. sharp falls can you make up your mind? No. Lady, come on. Let's go. Uh, oh, and she's gone. Go. Whew. So, bizarrely, the monster was being chased by two large surgeon and a bullfish. <laughs> <laughs> and as such, was moving with great speed. So this monster, this 187-foot-long monster, 15-foot out-of-the-water-head monster was being chased by two sturgeon and another fish it's like a lion running away from a small group of mice yeah so the captain reportedly caught a glimpse of the monster's face it had three teeth large eyes the color of a peeled onion a white star on its forehead and a belt of red around its neck i'm concerned so three teeth maybe that's only three Uh visible like only three visible teeth by star, does he mean like, like a? It star might be like star? in the sense it it might be like in the sense of a horse's head where they have the like the thing in the middle, s- the thing in the middle. It might be something like that. Okay, that would be my guess because they I think that's called a star. And it had a bow tie. Yeah, well, basically it had a bow tie. Okay. Yeah, um, this particular incarnation of the monster would only appear in this one instance. <laughs> Akin indicating it was either a possible hoax or joke being played on the readers. Um, I should also note that this is not an unusual trend for descriptions of the lake monster because nearly every description that follows will have significant differences outside of the serpentine nature of the creature. Oh, <laughs> like okay. Sizes, colorations, uh, the number of horns it has, the shape of the head, they all are different, basically, after this point. Yeah, I'm sure that's um, probably pretty similar to the descriptions of any other water-based uh, monster. Oh, absolutely. So, in 1873, another sighting was reported in the New York Times. A group of men had been laying railroad tracks when a strange sound coming from the lake drew their attention. When looking wake- lakeward towards the when looking lakeward, the workers saw a large serpent creature emerging from the lake. In fear, the men abandoned their tools. Shortly after the serpent returned to the lake, and the men described it as a scale-covered gray monster with a small, round, flat head with a hood. And now, when I hear a hood, I'm imagining it has, like, a little red hoodie on. Yeah. But what? I'm assuming that it's got, like, a ridge on the top of the hood. On the top of the head that kind of, uh, like, looks like a hood. okay. Kind of like, um, like, it's like a lizard type thing. Yeah. So. Um, 
later that year, a passenger steamship would be would supposedly collide with the creature, causing it to surface unharmed and leave the boat behind. Accounts okay. would continue to follow a fairly similar pattern, and at one point, famed P.T. Barnum of Barnum and Bailey, well, at the time it was Barnum Brothers, it was Barnum's, Barnum Circle, was Circus, wow, uh, would offer a whopping $50,000 for the creature's remains, which, this is late 1800s, so that's like a lot of money. Yeah, let's see a uh, USD value in 1800s. Make it 1880. Uh, 18... Wow, they have it listed by year. Start year is 1880, and the amount was $50,000. Calculate? That would have been $1,276,411.76. So a serious... That's a serious sum. Yeah, that's a lot. Um... So, as the 20th century dawned, sightings would taper off until 1960, when renewed interest would thrust Tre- Champ back into the limelight. So, after all those sightings, like that flap in the 1800s, um, Harold Patch would be the first to see the creature in its return on May 20th, 1960. In his account, while picnicking, he saw a giant snake-like creature rise up from the water. He sat and watched Champ for nearly half an hour, described it as having a snake-like appearance with three to four humps and measuring at least 20 feet in length. Uh, the book described the creature as frolicking. <laughs> How does a water-based um, thing frolic? So I think it's just more of like a general flowery language. Oh, but okay. I like to imagine that it was like, do 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm champ. And it had like a little song. Yeah. Uh, Walter Hard would see Champ two years later in 1962 with his wife. He heard a strange noise from the lake and looked over to see a whitish sphere emerge from the water, which he described as the head of Champ. The sphere would appear briefly, then leave his sight, looking almost like a person swimming. (laughs) I would be remiss to acknowledge that Patch was an editor for Vermont Life and had been collating stories on the monster for some time prior to this sighting. Oh, he's primed. And also, uh, that's not his last name. That's a nickname he got from college. <laughs> oh, I also just said uh, Patch was the editor. Hard was the editor. Walter Hard was the editor. <laughs> I, I mixed the two up. Because brain. Um, because and then brain. In, another, in another unique story, scuba divers described an encounter with Champ. The creature surfaced near them, its head emerging eight feet above the water, gray body visible. Supposedly, it investigated the divers inquisitively and moved on. Sightings would continue, like, people would see it on ferries, people would see it on Hero Island, um, but they're really, like, all the same general oeuvre, where it's like, I saw something in the distance, it looked gray. It was gray and wiggly, I'm pretty sure it's a monster. Yeah, it's... Sea monster stories can be very boring, and I just pulled out all the ones that were actually kind of interesting. Um... (laughs) Uh, but yeah, so like, like the other thing too, is the, the accounts differ. And even though people say that, oh, they're all so shockingly the same, they're not, they're just the same general, like it's the same general description of a phenomena, but the details are not exactly one-to-one. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like that's a thing you got to be very careful of with this type of reporting because people make bold claims about stuff like that. Um, so This brings us to 1977. Um, Perhaps the most infamous photo of a sea monster that has ever been captured outside of um, the Nessie, the, you know. Yeah, this is the the one that was in all, like, the the Scholastic Book Fair monster books and stuff that that I'd go through. This is, like, the the, the one where you're like, oh, that's the one. Yeah, this is, like, this is, like, so there's the Nessie Toy Submarine one. And then there's this one. Those are the they're the two pictures of sea monsters that like are serious, right? Um so this particular image and it's in the show notes and um you can look up uh the Mancy photo if you want to see it like for real. Um cuz this is like the most this is the thing that kind of put Champ on the map. Uh so in 1977 Sandra Mancy Mancy and her husband Anthony which for some 
reason the husband's named in this story, but the wife is almost never named when the husband's the person of interest. But whatever. In any whatever. story. Yeah. Like, this is how uh, it goes. That's yeah. a good so, comment under that photo, by the way. The side, side stroke, stroke monster style. It kind of looks like someone doing a side stroke. It does. I didn't think about I mean, that until he put that comment. Yeah. It's clearly not someone doing a side stroke, but it reminds me of a side stroke. Yeah. Um, so they stopped on, they stopped by the lake on their way to the Canadian border. And of course I'm assuming for pre- prescription drug sl- smuggling because you know, Canada, uh, <laughs> not really. Uh, suddenly the creature emerged from the water, drawing the attention of Sandra and her children. The head emerged some six feet from the water and the body was 12 to 15 feet long by their estimation. When Anthony, who had been getting something from the car returned, they continued to watch it for several minutes and like hurriedly rush the kids out of the water. Um, I mean, good move. If I saw a monster, I would encourage the yeah. children to get out of uh, the water. Yeah. At this time, Sandra managed to capture the now famous photo uh, before it resubmerged. So, um, watch it for a few minutes. They see it moving around. She takes a picture. That's it. So, the Mansi photo would become the most com- credible, important, and frankly visible photo of the lake monster for, like, supporters of the lake monster. Um as a source of great speculation, a number of individuals have used this photo as conclusive proof of Champ because it's literally the only, like, even remotely close to evidentiary evidence that exists outside of anecdotes. Um, and uh, it's, like, constantly cited in books and stories about Champ and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. This photo, however, was the subject of an investigation by Joe Nickel and Benjamin Radford. Okay. Incidentally, their investigation points out several clear knocks on the validity of this photo. Mansi is unable to provide the negative of the photo, other photos from the roll, nor could she remember the exact site of the photo for verification, scale checks, or even water depth checking. Uh, additionally, she waited a full four years before releasing the photo, uh, which um, creates a fairly compelling, ambiguous photo in the end. Because yeah. it's, it's a compelling image. It's a cool image. I don't know what it's of. Because, like, you can't really... You look at that and you're like, that's cool. I don't know what that is, but that's cool. Yeah, it's a right? cool, unclear thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that being said, Radford, the person who did the study of her, uh, doesn't believe that she's lying. He, he's, he believes she's a seer witness of something. And he doesn't believe that they hoax, they willingly hoax the photo. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that he believes it's a sea monster, though. Yeah. Uh, so examination of the, fo- lo- the photo by locals indicates that the object in the photo may have been, in fact, something placed there by someone. Because it appears to sit on a sandbar, which, if you're from the area, you can tell, like, like where sandbars are just by the surface of the water, which is totally a thing for people who live near water. Oh like, yeah. You you can you can pick out like weird features it of acts different. water. Yeah. Yeah. Um it's also been proposed with some experimentation that the photographed object was simply not as big as estimated, nor were the two objects in fact connected. So if you look at that and you actually look at the image, it kind of looks like so the the left part of it, the head bit looks like it's coming out at a different angle than the right part. And there oh, just happens okay. to be a shadow connecting the two. Yeah. The problem is the quality of the photo is leaves much to be desired, so you can't, like... Yeah, because it could very, might as well just be, like, a goat on a sandbar looking to the right. Yes. It it literally could be, like, with all that it, that it is. Um, one person, like, said that it would have to be, like, a really uh, detailed model and, like, all that stuff. And I'm like... Why would it have to be a detailed model? The image is terrible. Yeah, you, you don't need that much detail to get something with this little detail. Yeah. it's It looks a little shiny on the neck, and the rest of it's black. Yeah. So, um, I kind of lean towards, like, a sturgeon breaching and, like, a rock or something that just appeared because of the tide or something Oh, yeah, it could be, like, a lines. fish in a rock. Because yeah. that's that's kind of what I that's the kind of vibe I'm getting. Um, but there's so many things that it could have been. Like really, let's could be, be a bird on a rock. Could be so many things. Um, and like I I also <clears throat> sorry, 
There goes my voice. Uh, <laughs> I also don't think that um, I don't think that Mancy's lying because um, they they didn't gain anything monetarily. They didn't get any ben- benefit from it or anything like that. Um, and I know you don't need to get monetary benefit to like really benefit from something, but like I don't know. They're just it, it doesn't. There is not a compelling reason for me that they're lying. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, if I was, and they may may have, um, after it started getting popular, um, licensed it. I don't think they did, though, so... Yeah, that's kind of... Because that photo's everywhere, so they kind of lost out. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't think that they hoaxed it. I think they're genuine, but they misinterpreted something. And, like, it's kind of like... um, It's kind of like looking at something in the sky and trying to judge its size... So looking you, at something in the water and trying to judge its size is really difficult because if you don't have common markers to compare it like with, because like look at this picture, like you don't know how far out that is based on the image, you don't know how uh, tall that is, you don't know how any of that, you don't yeah. know any of that, you because there's no common point of reference nearby. Yeah. Well, if there's one, if you're looking at a thing and there's just a bunch of n- uniform nothingness around it. You have no idea how large that thing is or its distance from you unless you know the size and distance of a known object to, exactly. to like put next to it. You, you need something to calibrate your estimations against. Yeah. That's on the same plane as the thing. Because um, otherwise you can't. You can't. Because that's why we're really good at identifying stuff on land, but not so good at identifying stuff in water and sea because our caveman brains, our lizard brains... Uh, naturally evolved to get good at identifying stuff on land because that increased our survival chances. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, whatever. But, yeah, so, I, I don't know. I don't think it's a picture of a sea monster, but I also don't think it's a hoax. Is my That's the, my official stance on the matter of the Champy photo. Yeah, or, so, like, seems Champy reasonable. Photo. Yeah. Um, now... Jumping forward a little bit, while I was focusing on gra- while we were focusing on graduating high school and becoming a more whole person, uh, Champ made another appearance, and it's the last appearance that I could find online at the time of writing this episode. Okay. Uh, supposedly, on May thirty first, Eric Olson shot a footage of a creature swimming across the lake with an apparent head um, and back being visible in the footage, varying points, like so it was like moving up and down, indicating that. It was swimming through the water. And I've got a YouTube link there, and that's in our show notes. So feel free to open that up, Brandon. Let us two minute long observe. Video. But I can still skip around. Yeah. Okay. So interesting thing, he starts the camera off the thing, first of all. He um, starts off, and then it's there. Yeah, then he pans over, and... It definitely looks like something uh, like moving up and down the water. Like it's really bad, low quality 2009 cell phone camera yeah. footage. Yeah. Um, um, so one, I see your comment on the video below. This is moose. Um, which yeah, they'll just cross water, kind of exactly like that. Almost exactly like that. It, it almost exactly looks like a female moose. Yeah. It like it's identical. And then there's also that one video of it is shallow water, but there is someone on like a flat bottom fan boat. And then there's just a moose going full sprint across water, but you can't really tell how deep it is in the video, so it just looks like a moose running down a river. And it's fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I think it's a moose swimming across the water, and like it's a super believable explanation. They're in the north where moose are just a thing, and they're nightmare creatures from the depths of hell themselves. So I think I think it's a I think it's a female moose swimming across the water. I don't Yeah, that's how it looks. And you can kind of see the trail behind it. Like when he pans left to right, like it's clearly trying to get from one shoreline to another shoreline. It, exactly. Yeah. Like it's not it, going long ways with the river like a like it's just chilling. It's going like shortest point to the nearest land. Yeah, it's it's very clearly moving across the river to get somewhere. Yeah. So or not the river, the lake to get somewhere. Um so I don't I don't think this is champ whatsoever. no there's there's no indication that this is in fact champ there's no um like and the, like once again the same problem there's nothing to really identify the size of this creature off of in this image in this video um 
so once again, like you can't really say much about it because contextually there's not that much there. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it goes right back to like the weird uh, how, how you could fit a school bus in your guitar case, John. It kind of is. That's how it worked. Yeah. That's how I did it. I use monster magic. Monster magic. <laughs> I sure did. The power of monster magic. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but what is it? Is the real question. It's a, I, I, I think it champ is a moose. No, like in general, like what are what are people seeing? Um, Probably a lot of different things that look kind of like a thing that they heard about. Yeah, so I kind of wanna I wanna take a minute to make note of some things. So there's some things that I've said that prime you to like be more accepting of the notion of champ during this podcast, and I want you to examine the biases that I I have intentionally produced for you. Okay. Um. So first, while the lake is 400 feet at its deepest point. That is not the depth for the whole length. What? In breadth of the, the lakes lake. Lakes aren't just one deepness all the way around? No. In fact, in a lot of places, it's like 15 feet at its deepest. <laughs> so the size and like, like, like you could probably walk the lake in some places. Like I wouldn't because it's super polluted, but whatever. Yeah. Um, and that's really, really important to consider because a lot of people use that as an argument for why something exists. Um, but also consider the fact that at 400 feet depth, like, nothing would be resurfacing if it's moving. Like, there's so few things that would resurface. Yeah, and the, that, that's kind of the problem with, uh, like, pressure and water and stuff. Like, after a certain point, like you're only gonna see well look at the ocean like there's creatures that only live in between certain depths of water because any deeper yeah. they'll get crushed any higher they'll explode and the ones that do don't do that are typically mammals and they require an obscene amount of food to operate yeah like truly obscene amounts of food and like I I don't know if the ecology of Lake Champlain would be able to support a sea monster let me be just be real um without people noticing. Um, and so while technically something could hide in the depths, it's super duper unlikely. Um, some use the depth to explain the lacks of corpses as them falling prey to the immense pressure of the lake's depth. But like, you're making a lot of, well, but this could be happening. Nope. But nope. the thing nope. is, nope. sorry, cat was chewing on a cable. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but the thing <laughs> is like, because it's not all that deep, if a lake monster dies somewhere where it's not that deep, eventually it's going to wash ashore one time. It'll wash ashore one time, and it'll be super um, weird looking. Uh, so let me see if I can do this. Cat, don't you? I'm trying to copy and paste. Cat, cat I'm trying to copy and paste. So, like, there could be something we would expect to see from... Oh, uh, the blobfish? Yeah, um, how, like, they yeah. look kind of... Like a well, weird normal fish, and then they, it's the difference in water pressure. It's not that pronounced because it is only 400 feet. Uh, but yeah. still, oh, no, this is like, 3,000 feet. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, no, the, the, the fact still remains. Like, there's a lot of stuff that would be different and what have you. Um, however, I'm going to push the company line of Cryptopedia for this one. Uh, and I'm, pro I'm pretty sure it's a sturgeon or a bunch of sturgeon because they exist in that lake absolutely. It's connected to the Hudson. So sturgeon are a thing. And sturgeon by themselves are monsters. So Has anyone I guess... ever proposed that Champ, because it's connected to the Hudson, could leave the lake? Well, there's a canal. Uh... Well, okay, so... It could, it could, it's like, also sneak connected a lock, to the St. Lawrence, but well, that's well, that's that's the whole the whole yeah. conceit of Nessie. I didn't see anyone talking about that like, in that way. Why are you now um, only now trying to sabotage me, Cat? Because you're almost done. I know. Uh, She's just under the desk where all the cables are. Good. Um, but yeah. So the 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 
that's usually like the argument for Nessie is it can leave the lock, right? Yeah. But I've literally never seen that in the context of um, Champ. Like none of the stuff I saw was like talking about that as a possibility. And I think the reason why is because Lake Champlain's so big versus Loch Ness. Gotcha. And I think I think people like don't feel the need to explain away Lake Champlain, like something being in Lake Champlain, um, because they're like, oh, it's just so big. Because so of its, its size. Gotcha. It's, it, we don't need to come up with a theory for like how it survives and all that stuff, and you know we don't have to come up with a theory for how it has to leave through channels and what have you. Um, because, like, the other thing, too, is people are like, oh, it was a sea at one point, so maybe some plesiosaurs, yada, 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 ba 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 But, like, a survivable population of plesiosaurs would be, like, insane. And <sighs> Zoology exists for a reason, people. I yeah. know you love cryptozoology, but, like, zoology does work. Like, listen to zoologists. Zoology does work, and if you like the idea of, like, living dinosaurs and stuff like that, Look up the coelacanth, which is spelled completely weird. Or meet a chicken. Or meet a chicken. <laughs> They've fallen from grace, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, but they're they've got the they got the little like uh, them feets. <laughs> they do it. They've got them feet. They got them feet. They're see. I'm picturing chicken nails in the light of like. A weird old sad guy at a bar that's just like, I used to be really cool. <laughs> you know what I found out? Um, took an arrow to the knee yeah. from Skyrim. That's a reference to marriage. How so? It's a it's a Norse it's like a, a Scandinavian phrase. Oh. Like I, I used took to, an took arrow to the knee. knee. I used to be an is, adventurer like you. I took an arrow to the... So they're, they're implying marriage I, is like an arrow to the knee? I used to be an adventurer like you until I got married, is basically what it means. You don't have to I think. stop being an adventurer. I mean, yeah, I'm married, but yesterday I, we drank and played video games. So <laughs> the adventure well, that, didn't that doesn't, stop. That doesn't sound like an adventure. That sounds like drinking and playing video games. Uh, I mean, it it's is old for, Norse slang. We're indoors people. Oh, wait, no, it's false. Got a new fibbage. It's false. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at John's Googling face. And then, the, oh, what about the the, sure. uh, the the honey bun or sweet sweet roll? Okay, so that was wrong. That was wrong. Okay. I, I, I'm wrong. Were, I apologize. Were you uh, just misfed that information? I was misfed that information. Okay. Um. Well, Snopes tells me I was misfed that information. Snopes will get you every time. Yeah. It's... General consensus is this isn't true. Okay. Okay. The Snopes just have like a random, like a random button, so you could just like for fun look at random facts. I feel like um, random facts on Snopes will just make you depressed. That's probably true. Oh, there so is a randomizer button, though. Okay. Oh, there's an editor's picks? <laughs> Uh-oh. Why are you making face? Did you click the random button and get something terrible? <laughs> Did Budweiser pull their product from a store where Arabs ce celebrated 9-11 attacks? Oh. That's an old article, too. It's from 2001. Oh. So, yeah. Um, well, with that, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to end the episode. Best way to run into our credits. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, luckily, we don't have sponsors, so we don't have to, like, make things clean for the sponsors like clean yes. endings oh no we're, uh, we're sponsored by extreme restraints.com once again not we are not we still haven't gotten our free humblers yet so <laughs> um so as always our website is cryptopediacast.com our instagram is at cryptopediacast twitter at cryptopediacast 
Email us, CritipediaCast at gmail or us at CritipediaCast.com. We have a Patreon. And Brandon, it's your turn to read the Jackalope names. Yes, we've got a, we got Marty Von Party. We have Bird Schneider, who is okay, running around the house, still recovering. He, 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 he tried to swim after the surgery, and actually he just sinks now, so he's trying to get his bones hollow again. He's trying to get yeah, the bones it- cord out. Oh yeah, it's a really slow process. Brandon, that's the most disgusting way you've ever put that. <laughs> but thank you. You're welcome. We have Jonathan Shepard and Thomas Granger. Who hung sixteen forty two for buggery with a mare, a cow, two goats, diver, sheep, two calves, and a turkey. Mm-hmm. You also forgot to mention Clay Sinclair. Did I mention Clay Sinclair? That's because you put them on the top part. Let me put a couple breaks in there. Now they're all grouped together. I was reading the the top of sheet seven. He was at the bottom of sheet six. You sabotaged Clay. I sabotaged you. You sabotaged Clay. Clay. I I have been playing games with Clay, okay? I have not, well, I have not willingly sabotaged him. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh... When I was when I was playing with him, he was like, you know, we're streaming, so don't don't say anything bad. And it's like, I don't think you will, but I'm like, oh, you don't know me. And he's like, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I thought that was funny. Um, we have a Facebook group. Uh, just search for Confetti Cast. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. If you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them so we can just promptly ignore them. Um, yeah. Oh, Facebook group. Also, Lenwood Jerp keeps posting stuff to me, me, keeping up on the interesting things in between breaks and the such. Yeah, he posts more stuff than I have ever posted in that Facebook group. Yeah, and it's somehow still all relevant stuff. Yeah, like, which is horrifying. To Cryptopedia stuff, which as someone who's been doing this for 80 uh, episodes now, still hard to find stuff relevant to us. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at crypto, cryptopediacast.com. My Twitter is at crypto brandon. And I had, I, uh, I, cr- there was a sandwich I haven't had for a long time and I made it for breakfast this morning. And it's going to sound terrible, but try it because I usually cook good, but sometimes I like to cook bad. My favorite dinner when nobody else is around, Bush's original baked beans just still in a can. Um, and that is what you do is you get yourself like a nice six inch, uh, it doesn't have to be a baguette, but like a baguette shaped piece of bread, toast it, put it on the plate, get yourself a can of spam, cut it long, long ways, and then throw it on the pan on really high. You don't have to really cook it. You just want to get the edges crispy. No, you gotta, you gotta get it crispy. And then you layer them on the bread. Then you break out the maple syrup. Use the real maple syrup and give a drizzle of syrup onto the spam. And then while it's still really hot, that's when you put on your mozzarella cheese so that mozzarella gets melty on it and have that as a sandwich. It uh, sounds like a monstrosity. Actually good. There's your there's your I, tip. It sounds like you're going you've you've given me diabetes just listening to it. You've given me both diabetes and uh heart disease. I simultaneously specifically used the low sodium spam yeah but low sodium spam is still high sodium count i intentionally didn't read the back of the can because i was like i haven't had spam in a very long time and i don't don't want to feel bad oh my god somebody roasted me so hard because i said i enjoyed spam and i'm just like it's just pork yeah it's just it's just reprocessed the the bit of pork it's pork shoulder it, that it's Pork, pork shoulder, this one processed and put into a cube. And here's the other question for people that knock on Spam so much. When you get the, is it called a chef salad? When you get the salad that's got the cubes of ham in it, do you think they're getting real ham and cubing it? Or do you think they're buying the ham that's already in a can that's kind of cube-shaped already? Like, it's perfect. They're just cutting up Spam into cubes. I do think that that sometimes is actual ham because the texture is different. Oh, is it, is it textured? Yeah, it oh. has a different texture. See, I, 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 I agree with your defense of spam, but I, I, I want to be, I want to be clear about whether or not we're, we're defending this 
properly. Yeah, and here's the thing that I'm a little bit ashamed of is that I've actually never eaten that kind of salad because I have an aversion to hard-boiled eggs, which is commonly also in there. So that's just by from what I saw in other people's salads sometimes. Oh, you're missing out. You're missing out. I don't like the hard-boiled hard eggs. eggs. You're mm-hmm. missing out on hard-boiled eggs. Nope. I like them over easy. I like them with the, the runny bits. I love scrambled. Scrambled's my favorite. Scrambled's decent. <sighs> scrambled's real good. Scrambled also nearly burnt down my apartment one time, but that's another story for a different time. There's there talk about the time on the podcast when I burnt all the nonstick coating off a pan. Yeah, I think so. Okay. At least once. Gotcha. We've, we've I think we both talked about our food horror st- or our cooking horror stories at least once. I think it's like a pre episode banter. Like yeah, this year. There's a I reason why I have even. fire extinguishers throughout the house. Honestly, I should have fire extinguishers at the house. Because it's safe, but I'm lazy. I keep one in the kitchen. I keep one in the now, workshop. I keep one. I keep anything where there is things that get hot or are flammable. There is a fire extinguisher. Do you have any that are rated for electricity, or are they all like what are they rated for? They're they're all for everything. Okay, they're the general purpose ones. Okay. Yeah. Master a, a jack of all trades, master of none. That's not the full quote, by the way. Or the full saying. People say that, but it's jack of all trades, master of none, but off the time, better than a best, better than a master of one. So, so it's it's really the opposite of the meaning of the thing. If you if you say the full thing, yes. Uh-huh. No, I know. But I also am. I have uh, what we would call terrible self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my Instagram is Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is JohnDunhamGames.com. And my email is John at CryptopediaCast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is GreaterGloryCo.com. And his email is TomMikeHill at Gmail.com, who I just saw the other day uh, at Hannaford. Oh, really? We were doing our grocery shopping uh, at the same time. And also... How's he doing? He's, he's doing pretty good. He's, um... Every time I'm with Tom in person, I forget how how tall of a human he is. He is a very tall man, and that's coming from you. Yeah, yeah. Is it like as the thing? Like it? I'm I'm a little over six one. As someone who is a height that's not great, like it's a it's normal tall. Like I don't feel like I'm a weird person if you see me, but I'm at the height where it's weird if there are people who are taller than me. And he's definitely got several inches on me. Oh, he's he's a tall dude. He's a great dude, but he's yeah. a tall dude. Oh, yeah. Nicest dude in the world. Yeah. I just, I just had a thought, and then I lost it. Actually, it the thing laugh. is, I, I saw him, and we both did the thing, because we had the, the masks and the such. So we did that thing where we both saw someone, and then, like, both and our heads were like that guy looks a lot and my head's like that guy looks a lot like tom hill because he's really tall and he's got long he's got like black hair and i saw tom was like that guy looks a lot like brandon because he's kind of tall and has a beard and then there's like that processing time at the kick in like oh yeah we both have uh and then we're like what's up <laughs> we're both um easily identifiable in a crowd yeah <laughs> And then there's me, the like the broad gremlin off in the corner, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're see you and you should take advantage of this. Should commit more crimes. Because your 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 description could match the description of other people. I am. I am. Uh, I am a, a shapeshifter. Yeah. At most masquerades. Yeah, like, you could, like, basically, if you just take off your hat, you're gone in a crowd. I mean, I don't wear a hat anymore, so. Anymore? Are you anti-hat now? No, I don't wear it anymore. Like, I don't wear it frequently. Yeah, is, where, do you get tired remember, of the comments? Well, no, I got tired of the fact that it started smelling terrible, and I didn't feel like <laughs> washing it. Because I'm a sweaty How man. Old is that? Now that I think about it, that's a very old, uh, that's an elderly hat. 
at least a decade. Yeah, it's it's got to be more at than least. a decade. Because that, that's got to be the same hand. Because we. So it's actually. So it's the second version of that hat that I have. Oh, okay. So I lost the first one. Um. In like 2009, 2010, bought a second one. Gotcha. So it is ten years. So it is this about a decade old. old. Okay. Yeah. The, then it's it's currently underneath a Cryptopedia hat. Um, okay. Which exists because I was thinking that it we... ha- has to be damn near close to almost two decades old if it was the same hat. No, no, no. It would be a decade. It would be a decade still. Oh, okay. because I got it in two thousand nine. Because remember the in high school one? I wore. Yes. Remember in high school, I wore the cowboy hat that I thought was a fedora because I'm an idiot. Oh, yes. Yeah. I remember that now. Okay. For some reason, my brain had edited you to having only ever had that hat. My first affectation was the, was the was cowboy the, hat. The cowboy hat. Yeah. Which I wore to school. Yeah. Which is funny because I'm not cowboy in any way, shape, or form. The main reason I wore it was because it reminded me of Indiana Jones, and I love Indiana Jones. Yeah, which one? Totally fair and valid. Two, I also have a cowboy hat, because in the summertime, they because uh, they go long ways, it keeps the stuff off the back of your neck. Yeah. For um, when doing your The work. other thing... I I had I would I did the whole uh, trilby versus fedora thing last night with somebody. And it was discussing the differences between them. <sighs> um, and then I I followed it up with, but really at the end of the day, anyone who actually cares about the difference is also terrible as well. <laughs> Here, here's something I would like to point out. Um, I'm not going to do the research. I'm going to trust that Robert Evans from who is a journalist from the Behind the Bastards uh, podcast did the mm-hmm. research. That is Adolf Hitler wore a trilby and called it a fedora. So, so, so. <laughs> Adolf Hitler. Okay. So one terrible person, but two. Everyone, yeah, we all agree he's a bad guy. <laughs> um, it's important to actually recognize that terrible people are still people. Yeah. Um, and he is a fucking dirty hipster. Yeah. Who also orchestrated the deaths of millions. Yeah. So if you think that a hipster is okay or a fucking incel is okay, just remember that like one of the worst humans in history is basically a proto incel. Yeah, because he didn't he didn't he also like have a, a crush on someone for he, he 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 there was a girl he liked in in school but he he wrote her like one love letter once but didn't sign it with his own name and then he made his own friend like stalk her and then report back to him what she was doing Um, and once again i think i made this joke the last time we brought this up uh she dodged a literal bullet oh yeah she did dodge a literal bullet i don't remember if this is something we talked about before during the podcast i don't know because i i definitely remember making that joke i I, I know yeah he 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 gave himself a nickname and made his friends call him mr wolf which he also signed documents as during his reign as well, it didn't just last after high school. Um, I think the the bunker he shot himself in was called like some ver- German version of like the Wolf's Den or something like that. So here's my hypothesis that if if time travel actually existed, carried a bullet before Indiana Jones. Ah, uh, God! If time travel actually existed, what if Hitler is the better option because he was so incompetent, and there was a much much worse version that was in power because they were competent and not a complete fucking moron like should we send hitler a bully back in time to get like young hitler and get him in straight <laughs> straightened out it's like hey man knock it off with the head don't like or like calm down buddy like you can't give yourself a nickname <laughs> like i i i think i think we should maybe not uh Oh, don't bully Hitler. <laughs> I think we should, I should. I think we should move away from this this line of questioning it now that I'm thinking go about it. Better or maybe way worse. Now I'm sad that I even brought that up. <laughs> yeah, because he's a bad person. He's a monster. He he's a monster who enabled a machine that was full of monsters. And we have to remember that fascism happens pretty easily. It um, happens easily and. Uh, I think there's TV series. No, no, there was 
Mm. Nah. I was going to bring up something about one of the... I can't find proof. I can't find... Think, I, I'm trying to remember if something is factual or something someone told me once but might not be true, so I'm going to not bring it up. Yeah, like me bringing up fucking taking an arrow to the knee and then finding out that it was false. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I'm not going to... Hitler bad is our, our is the main takeaway of the Lake Champlain monster episode. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, what was it? Hitler bad Honestly, and and it's monster magic uh is the how what we're going the new order perspective. Yeah. I I think well, I think every episode of Cryptopedia uh one of the takeaways should be Hitler bad. Yes, yes. We we have strong opinions on a lot of things about different card games, whether certain foods good or bad, whether um seahorses do or don't have pouches but we but we all we all agree on uh hitler bad hitler bad black lives matter um we social, both in- being a social justice warrior is not a is not a weak thing it's or a bad not thing. a weak thing um if you don't like spam you haven't tried it um well i was i was going more for like just like social stances oh, and, like, like social and moral love. values yeah, yeah. Oh, you okay. know, like because because I'd say I'd say our we've never I don't think we've ever actually explicitly said it on the podcast. I'd say our our stance is more or less progressive. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it <laughs> leans towards the more progressive side than the less. <laughs> yeah, it, it leans more progressive than the fucking Democratic Party. I can tell you that much for shit sure. Yeah. But anywho, uh, things are gonna get weird. I'm John. I'm Brandon. <laughs> I did that out of order. Yeah. <laughs> weird thing, weird get gonna things are. Weird, weird things gonna get get talking about things getting weird. Who that sex museum? By the way, check it out. The the song is like literally someone having an orgasm. Oh, I listened to it with sound on. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I was no, on... I'm telling the I'm telling the listeners. To oh, listen okay. I was on Google Images literally... looking at some stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's literally someone having an orgasm while people are jerking off dildos in a wall. Yeah. Um, What's that one song? Is it Penny and Longstocking? Does it? Oh, uh, it's it's uh Penny and Stocking with Garter Belt. Yeah. Um, the song. Let me find it because I remember that was one of those songs that I would put I put on in to upset you. There was it was we were just driving your car and apropos of nothing that song just came on and I was like, huh, that's a little uh, they're not being subtle with this, are they? Oh, <laughs> uh, want to know what the name of the song was? What? Wait, let me see if it's a <laughs> juice. Ah, nice juice. I'm gonna put that in the the episode notes in the sources because... just put it in the sources yeah that's exactly where i'm putting put it. it as a youtube link in the sources but don't don't give it a name like how the other ones have a name just make it a, or so it's a, like a they, they'll be surprised yeah i'm i'm glad i never had that in a playlist while a family member was driving in the car with me because <laughs> like <laughs> i'm listening to it right now and it's literally, it's literally someone pretending to have an orgasm. Yeah. It's literally it. And it's clearly being, it's a clearly pretend orgasm, I should say. Like, if you listen to it, there's. Yeah, it would be weird <laughs> if you're just, you know, hanging out with somebody, having a good time. And then you're like, don't, don't mind me. And you just reach over and grab a microphone. Well, I mean, they did it in a, a a sound studio for sure. I think I think it was actually the voice actress for Panty. Oh, okay. Um, which would track because Panty was the one who had like, Panty was hypersexual and Stocking was, uh, sweet. Yes. Is her whole thing. Oh, oh, also about like weird songs. I would like to point out, um, Thundercat just put out a new album and I listened to it, and I I I thoroughly enjoy it because I like jazz. But it sounds like old school, like, like jazz or almost like like Motown. But the lyrics aren't anything like that because he's just singing about liking cats, playing video games, uh, like comic books, um, and like so, like drinking. Like it's a, 
It's just Greg. <sighs> like he's got like I might be covered in cat hair, but I still smell good. Um, he's got some weird specific comic book references. Um, like there's a I might be covered in cat hair, but but listen. Yeah, it's just a song that called like Dragon Ball Do Rag. And I'm like, okay, I know you're like just from that one song you can just be like, I know what this one guy's all about. I mean, let's be fair, like if you're our age and you're a dude, generally speaking, you're you're on you you're on the Dragon Ball train Dragon Ball Z train. Oh yeah. I also like this is a like he like not everyone has to be but like most of us are yeah oh yeah most of us are he's cool like he's like i don't know you probably haven't heard of him but he also plays with like stevie wonder and mac demarco and like so he's like plays with huge guys he had um who's that guitar guy that all the uh, people like in the the the, he plays all the sultry stuff on the guitar but he's still a young guy he played with that guy once if anyone knows that, it would be you, not me. You realize yeah. that, right? Is it Miller? Steve, not Steve Miller. John Miller. I, Brandon, once again, if anyone would know that, it should be you, not me. Yeah. But, like, just, like, fa- like crazy famous people just, like, show up and play with them, like, at concerts. Okay. So we haven't, we, we're still not done. We still haven't technically ended this episode, I feel like. Have we still? Um, uh, okay. Have we? Have we ended this episode? I don't know. We said our names. We said our names. We said things are going to get weird, but not necessarily in the correct order. In the correct order. Do we want to cut all this out, or do we want to just keep it? Because this is—I'm probably just going to keep it because I will force people. Uh, John Mayer. That's who it was, by the way. Just like John Mayer oh, yeah. shows up and plays music with him. You know what's weird? Weird Al Yankovic has been playing a lot of music with Post Malone lately. Like a lot. I support that. I like Post Malone. But no, I'm just saying like, like he, he's he's one of those like he seems chill and like he just seems like he's happy all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just no I kind of love this dude. He's the best. He was just on Hot Ones. His energy is like aspirational. Yeah. Is his left hand entirely, like, he has, I think he has nail polish on his left hand. Nope, both hands. Yep, okay. both hands. And he has cat okay. paws I... tattooed on his palms, and he's got the Thundercats logo on the back of his, one of his hands. He's like a big he's... nerd. He found, he... <laughs> so the whole conceit of this is he, oh my god, he has Blake with Vegeta's head on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole ass mood. And this is his mood all the time, by the way. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like it's his <laughs> whole vibe. I like I like how the woman is like, no, no, get away, get away, and he just like keeps going, like no, no, no. And now he's moonwalking to her across grass. Yep. No. No, no, please leave. <laughs> She's just like, please. She's like, what's this weird guy doing? <laughs> I'm not sure if she's an actress or if he's just going to some random dude. Like, she's got to be like an actress or his girlfriend or something. Yeah. He also has a Gucci belt. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's not like a small act. He's like a big act. His videos are just look like they're shot on home cell phone videos. It's an aesthetic. Yeah. Like a little bit worse than cell phone quality is how all his videos look, but it's great. Oh, except for the ones where like there's he's uh, there's a guy in samurai armor and gets his arms and legs cut off. That's one. <laughs> I'm probably going to just leave all this in, and if someone wants to stop listening, they can just stop listening. Let's look at yeah. Thunder Thundercat Dragon Ball Do-Rag. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just watching this whole video, and he just jumped out of a dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized his pants have Vegeta on them, and yeah. I'm so... 
jealous of those pants. <laughs> I kind of want those. Mm-hmm. That's not my style, even. I'm a jean boy. <laughs> Oh, he attracted a lady with his Dragon Ball do rag, and then they, her friend saved yeah. him, her from him. There's also a lot of just air humping in public. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Okay. Now.